Welcome back to Rust the Watch, my name is Miguel and on this video I'm gonna show you how I painted my second edition Chaos Space Marine Army. Painting an army that wouldn't look out of place in a 90s white dwarf is something very easy to achieve. On this video I'm going to show you how to do this without any gimmicky tricks. This means that this is not a 72, 42 or 24 hours speed painting challenge video. In reality it's a homage to the second edition aesthetics with simple techniques that anybody can emulate using new tools. So get ready because I'm going to give you some pointers on how you can also do this and you can get those miniatures from your pile of shame onto the tabletop. The first decision that you have to make in a universe as vast as the 40k one is making a decision on how do you want to paint your miniatures. There are many Chaos Space Marine Legions and of course making this choice can take a little bit of time but in my case it was very straightforward because well I never had a choice to start with. Let's be honest here, Midnight Blue, Red and Lightning look fantastic with Gold Trim. There are many ways that you can get inspired to paint your miniatures. For me it's looking into old books and old art. But for you the source of inspiration could come from many different places. Whatever that might be, you have to find something that you like enough to be able to paint it in dozens of miniatures over a few weeks, maybe months because there is no better way to lose your inspiration and feel miserable about a project that should be fun than doing something over and over again that you absolutely hate. As an absolute fanboy that I am for vampires and anything that looks undead, well, the Night Lords were the obvious choice for me. There is still a whole section of the army that is corn dedicated, but I will cover that in a different video. And as fun as painting red and gold can be, well, midnight blue and gold it's even better. You should always try starting painting one single miniature and seeing how it looks. This way by going through the steps and the motions you can see if something is actually the way you want it to look. And then you can tweak that later on with further models. In my case for painting all these space marines I tried many different things and now I have a single system that I'm going to apply for the next miniatures that I'm going to include in the army. What you have in your head and what turns out to be after you paint they are two different things quite often. Experience might tell you more or less what you need to do and how to achieve the results that you desire, but there is nothing better than putting things to the test. When painting miniatures, one single miniature will tell you more about your method and what you need to tweak and fix than anything that you might research on the internet. So hit me out over here, paint your first miniature and then see what works and what you need to fix you will still want to do some things differently for each subsequent model or unit. In fact, in this small army I experimented with a lot of different recipes. I did something quite different with my main unit, my motorbikes, my dreadnought, the tank and the terminators. And each time that I tried something different I was tweaking, saving time, making things faster and still achieving the results that I have set as my goal. But all of that all of it began from one single humble miniature that I use as my test model. And this guy over here that I recently got on the mail is going to get the treatment that I have already streamlined, finished and completely refurbished from the beginning. I'm quite excited about that because I'm going to make a video on the process and you should subscribe to the channel in order to not miss that. In my hands here I have one of the best secrets there is for painting armies and I hope Alex from the Hobby Grotto doesn't hear this. But yeah, I use a lot of known oil for this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did somebody say known oil? <laughs> Using known oil is one of the most common tricks in the books for those of us who paint armies. Using a dark wash that will make all the different colors more or less mute down so you can work on your highlights afterwards is a very easy way to get your miniatures looking better with very little effort. And although it's considered a low skill move, I don't care. I like my time better than being recognized for being a pro painter. Big shout out to my friend Alex from the Hobby Grotto, I'm gonna leave his channel link in the comments below and make sure that you check it out and you see how he does this masterfully with all of his miniatures. Thank you mate. So my two cents here, if you are using this step already, well keep doing whatever you're doing, man, woman or whatever you identify as because you are great. And if you are not, for whatever reason, well you better get a pot of this paint use it and tell me how you feel afterwards. If you are worried about that using contrast paints, washes or inks are not gonna look exactly the same as the miniatures that we see in old school armies, 
worry not because this is Rush the Wash and we do this all the time. Since this is a second edition Warhammer 40k army, well, I need to do a middle hammer paint job, but I am not shy of using contrast paints to achieve that. It is worth mentioning that you do not need the exact same paints that they used in the 90s to achieve those looks. And using contrast paints, speed paints, artistic inks or anything in your repertoire to achieve those colors that we love back in those days can be done very easily no matter what. Also, if your pulse is not great and you are afraid that you are not going to be able to achieve those smooth transitions that we had in the 90s, worry not, because even with crude highlights and a couple of glazes, you will be spot on. So don't trust those naysayers that say that contrast paints are noob tools. In fact, you shouldn't even care about that. If you like using them and they work, well, screw the haters. And there is nothing better to shut up those voices that looking at your painted armies. This is ancient knowledge for miniature painters, but if you're not doing it or you have stopped doing it, consider going back once again to doing dry brushing. It's a simple technique that is easy to learn, hard to master, but I cannot recommend hard enough. There was a time in my painting career where I stopped doing dry brushing because I wanted cleaner paint jobs. But if the middle hammer genius himself, our saint and savior, Mr. Mike McVeigh, advocates for using dry brush, then who the hell am I to disagree with that? The fun thing is that I started painting these space marines by more well, classic methods rather than dry brushing. And as I wanted to do it faster but I still keep more or less the quality that I was achieving, I got a little bit of divine inspiration. No, try dry brushing. Try it, I say. Go back to your roots and make your painter ancestors proud. I was honestly quite surprised about the results. And you know what? It actually worked and it was faster. So keep dry brushing brush liquors because it's worth your time. Painting decent looking metals can be a pain in the ass and in the Chaos Space Marines with all those rims and all those details I cannot even tell you how freaking frustrating can be, but I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve Regular loyalist Space Marines don't take this long because they don't have all these freaking golden trims all over the place But with a couple of tricks you can make this much much faster and more efficient if you do it correctly well, correctly here is a little bit hyperbolic because it takes a dum dum to actually mess it up. One trick that actually helped me do it faster was simply using the same metallic paint for everything and then glazing it with yellow. You've seen this before probably if you watch my videos and if you don't please subscribe to the channel right now. The Nazareth yellow is one of my favorite paints to make gold. All the gold that you will see in my Chaos Space Marines is painted with silver paint that I use for other details as well. And then I use Nasdaq yellow on top to make it gold. The cool thing is that by painting with Nasdaq yellow or other washes on top of your metallics, you can hide a lot of the mistakes that you have made when you painted the metallics. So don't fret about that. It makes it much easier, much faster, and it looks still very good. Tabletop standard. Seal of approval from Miguel and Rasta Wash. Investing a little bit of time on how you're gonna make your bases for your miniatures is going to make them look great. Since this is a second edition old school Warhammer army, well, I have to use a particular color on that. And you know what it is, right? At first I wanted to go as classic as possible and I started with a goblin green base followed by, well, a dry brush with sunburst yellow. This is the typical recipe from the 90s, you cannot go more classic than this. But after looking at my miniatures over and over again, I decided that something needed to be changed. So I painted my bases with brown and dry brush with grey, added some tufts, but the goblin green was still there. After trying several brands out there, the one that I have enjoyed painting green bases the most with is this one, Nostalgia 94 from War Colors Goblin Green. And to make it even better, they also have markers that you can use to paint the rims of your bases. Is it that clever? Deciding how you want your bases to look and sticking to a plan is going to make your miniatures look much better and it's also going to save you time. And if you want a particular vibe, well, choosing the right colors obviously is very important. And it's honestly difficult to screw it up with some neutral browns, green tabs and goblin green green bases. And I'm fully aware that some of you don't really like green bases. Well, in particular, it's you two guys, Baby Dan and Mariano. Suck it. 
Verde y ole. Ole. Beyond the golden trim, these miniatures also have plenty of stuff that you have to pay attention to. There are power cables, helmet lenses, case symbols, skulls and other details that need a little bit of attention and color. After all, 2nd edition armies were very well known for the striking color schemes, and paying attention to these will make your army look era appropriate. Since I'm using contrast paints, I just painted these areas with a neutral light color like ice yellow, white or bone. And now we're gonna use the magic of contrast colors. So painting the big areas and then working on the details with an easy technique will save time and still get those colors that we wanted to achieve. And of course we need to talk about transfers. Using transfers adds an extra layer of detail to your miniatures. And although sometimes they are a little bit tricky to use, they work quite well once you get a knack for it. To make things easier, use a decal softener. And don't be afraid to do your own personalization of the decals if they don't really fit what you need them for. Even if you speed paint most of your miniatures, just by spending a little bit of extra time in those small details will make a jumping quality that is absolutely amazing. And in this particular case over here with my Night Lords, doing a few free hands with lining makes them look much better. With a sharp detail brush, I'm going to create the first highlight using Calidor Blue. You just need to scribble a somewhat random line that divides itself into in one or more sections. And after that dries, you just need to paint an even thinner white line inside those blue lines. And if you watched the previous video on this particular army, you know that this guy over here, Mr. Bad Crotch, needs a little bit of extra care. Centerpieces in the army need a little bit of extra love. At the end of the day, they are more or less the avatars that are gonna take your place on the tabletop. And you don't need to do very difficult stuff with them. Just focus on a couple of key elements on the miniature, dedicate a little bit of extra time on those, and bam, you got a winner. I can hear your eyes rolling already, but spend... Wait, give me just one second. Spending some money on an airbrush is a great way to get your armies painted quite fast. The cool thing about using an airbrush is that the quality of the paints that you use sometimes can be, well, debatable. And one thing that actually works very, very well with airbrushes is using artistic inks. Compared to the prices of the paints that we can buy from Citadel and other similar brands, the value for quantity that we get on these ones is actually quite good. And that's without taking into account if we buy primer rattle cans or spray varnish. And after too many bad experiences priming with rattle cans, I have reneged from them. And any decent airbrush can take artistic varnish as long as it's an acrylic, and usually their cost is quite affordable. And this is one of those things that I have changed my mind through the years because I started using one and I just saw benefits. So my two cents here, invest a little bit of money on an airbrush and you're going to see a lot of benefits, I promise you. These are my key takeaways from painting a 2nd edition Warhammer 40k army and I have to thank my subscribers over here which are always behind me, you guys for watching the video, thank you very much for getting to this point, if you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing to Wash. and remember that my name is Miguel, there are two videos here that you should be watching if you haven't done that yet and I'll catch you guys in the next one, un beso, adios. Whoa, 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 did somebody say Nalnoil? Yeah, I think, I think he heard that.